Greetings, welcome back. My name is Ismael Delgado, and I'll be your presenter for today. We are with the Veterans Business Outreach Center. I'm one of the business advisors at the center, and I'm also a veteran. Today we'll be covering Module 6, Pricing for Small Businesses. So let's get started. The objective of this presentation is to describe the basic pricing principles for small businesses. Explain the process to help determine the right price for your product and or service. Inform on common pricing mistakes. Understanding the price drivers behind price. One of the things we need to look at when we're determining price for our products or services is understanding the underlying dynamics of three elements. These elements are cost of production as well as your profit margins on one side, the cost of production and profit margins of your competitors, and finally the evaluation of the consumer as they survey the landscape for a particular product or service that you are trying to provide. These dynamics put pressure, market pressure, to determine a market price for a product or service. Pricing mechanisms refers to the relationship between the supply or demand of a particular product or service and its price. Designed to increase profits despite changing market conditions and consumer expectations. Price mechanisms. Examples of price mechanisms. One example is loss leader. Products that derive customers but don't turn a profit. One example of this is grocery stores. In their effort to bring more sales volume or more traffic into the store, sometimes they'll offer at a discount price or even at a loss a product that will bring customers into the store with the intent of them selling, buying other goods. Price quality relationship. High price, high quality. Just like the, the name implies, the idea behind this is that the price that you're paying for a product or service comes with it a high quality item. Similar to price premium, provenance such made in Italy, products coming from Italy command a premium, such as handcrafted shoes, Italian wines, Italian handcrafted suits. These are products that, just by the fact they're made in Italy, convey a meaning that they were probably handcrafted or tailored, custom made, and demand a premium for their price. Demand-based pricing. This has to do with price discrimination. The more the demand, the more the price is gonna go up. The less demand for a product, the more discount it's gonna be. Multidimensional pricing, such as buying a new car. This is a system where, depending how much you give down, how long the, the note's gonna be, it's gonna, give, it's gonna give you how much your payments are gonna be. The relationship is the less time you're spending and paying, the less interest you'll be paying. So the more you, you pay on your, on your down payment and the bigger your monthly payments at the end, because your savings from your interest, the total payment to that particular product or service is less than if you were to go say the easy route, low down payment, longer term notes, you know, the final payment would be a higher payment. It's a mechanism used to, to co provide convenience for the customer, easy payment plan, but at the same time is providing more revenue to the business. Non-price factors. Non-price factors must allow an entrepreneur or business owner to beat the price competitor's war and redirect its price strategy to maximize profits. These include time travel, wait time, product quality, customer service, convenience, and ambiance. These are things that businesses will try to maximize their value for the consumer through convenience, through travel time, quality of product or service. These are all price factors included in the price of a product you buy. Nine laws of price sensitivity and consumer behavior. For example, framing effect, bundling packages. A common practice in the 90s was when a consumer would buy a computer, it would come with a bundle of software. It would add value and give reasons to the consumer one reason more to buy the computer as they're giving you this free bundle. Fairness effect. Is this a fair market value price? The intent there is 
to allow the business to give the consumer a relationship to compare between the fair market value of this product or service and the price the consumer is currently getting. The idea is to convince the consumer that this is a great deal. Again, because this is the fair market value, but right now you're getting it at this price. Shared cost effect. I can order a steak and dessert because the company's paying for it. Great. For example, if you do an appointment with the hairstylist for this weekend, they might do a massage and a shave for a gentleman or add a free hair coloring. You know, the, you're getting these things for free, added value again, sure effect. The company's gonna pay for it, you're gonna get it, might as well. It's for free. End benefit effect. This product will restore my youthfulness. You use this cream, it's gonna make you look better, that's why you wanna get it. Very common in the personal health, personal wellness, personal hygiene, industry, cosmetics, and so forth. Expenditure effect. What percent of my budget will go towards this product or service? This product is of this price, but the value that it produces because it does this, 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 and this. Very common with electronics or equipment used in the kitchen, kitchen appliances that will do multitask. It's not just a coffee pot, but it also grinds the coffee and it'll keep it fresh in the hopper. These are expenditure effects that it's, while it's more expensive, it can do several things for you. Saving you cost and time. Price quality effect. This Honda model is reliable, meaning this quality product has a price relation to quality. We've heard this before in a different relationship, price premium. Switching cost effect. Will it be more expensive if I change suppliers? The idea with this is you've been long enough with the company that if you switch and start again from the beginning, it's going to be more expensive. So it's worthwhile just staying with the company because the price is going to stay low for you. Difficult comparison effect. This surgeon has an excellent reputation, but he's very expensive. There's two relationships you can compare. One has to do with cost, and the other one has to do with the quality of the surgeon. Reference price effect, Wendy's or Dairy Queen. That has to do with reference price effect. What's your point of reference? Do you prefer the Wendy's? Do you prefer the Dairy Queen or the McDonald's? Wendy's or Dairy Queen effect. Common pricing mistakes. The person who does not calculate time as money will forever miscalculate. A quote from George Washington. Competing on price alone. As you've seen in other presentations, competing in price alone is not a good strategy. Setting price too low you know, is going to set you up for failure and diminish profit margins. Small businesses don't have economies of scale to compete in price. When you compete in price, you'll end up competing with the Walmarts of the world. You should look for other alternatives other than competing for price. Again, the premium quality ratio price quality ratio are strategies that small businesses compete with. Weak inventory or distribution controls. Many times a business will have a lot of merchandise that it's not turning or not selling and they'll discount it. We need to be careful with our inventory and with our product mix. Remember inventory that's not selling and it's just there in the warehouse is money tied up in inventory. You want to make sure that your product mix is turning and turning. Inadequate systems for tracking competitor selling price and market share. It's very important that you scan and monitor the market, in particular your, your, not only your customers, but your competitors. What is their pricing? What is their pricing strategy? Cost up pricing. You need to be careful with just increasing the price just because your inputs went up. What if your customers are very price sensitive? Something to be aware of. Price inconsistency. You know, if you don't have a, a price structure that is consistent with your policies and the quality of your products, that might send the wrong signal to your customer base. Paying sales representatives on the dollar volume rather than on additional profitability measures. It's very important that if you're going to have a sales force that are not measured just by the dollars that they sell, but how much more profitable are you? Pricing, discount and allowances. Discounts are often introduced into pricing strategy 
to attract more orders and gain customers and brand loyalty. Example, early payments, pay only principal, save on interest. Off-seasonal promotions, retail sector, they use this a lot. Off-season products that stay behind, merchandise that didn't sell in the winter, they're discounted in the spring. Bulk, this is what you see at Samsung and Costco. You, the bigger the quantity, the lower the price. Retail discounts, the classic buy one, get one free. New product promotions, very typical with retail. Cash discounts, two to 10, net 30, for example. This is a common practice, especially if you're dealing with government or institutional business to business models where they pay you in 30 or 40 or 90 days. You know, hey, the sooner they pay you, you might give them a discount, a common practice. Trade-ins, typical when you're buying a car or a boat, you know, you, you get a value for your trade-in and that's discounted from the selling price. In summary, understanding the essentials of setting price, we looked at also determining the right approach to your business, limit pricing mistakes common to small businesses. This training or presentation was not intended to make you an expert, but to give you the basics understanding of market pricing for your business. Again, we thank you for your attention, and with this, we conclude this presentation.